Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press and I have with me today Randy Lundin. He is the Senior Worldwide Product Manager for Mission Critical Systems. How are you doing Randy? Thanks David. So today we're going to be talking about the Think System SR950. This is our four socket, eight socket mission critical server. So Randy, tell us about the system and who's the target audience? Yeah, this is our top of the line server. It supports four and eight socket workloads targeted at mission critical applications, mainly CRM, OLTP, large transactional databases, as well as um, applications that need a large amount of memory and processing power, such as in-memory in databases and large virtualization workloads. So a really substantial system. Um, uh, it supports uh, four socket uh, configurations or eight socket configurations. Right, all in the all, same for all you in for you so chassis. Very dense system. All right, so let's take you through each of the components. We'll start at the front, shall we? Yeah, let's yep. start. Okay, so <coughs> the first thing to notice is the the drive bays at the front. Um, we have a total of 24 two and a half inch hot swap drives uh, that are supported here. Uh, these support Randy the um, the SAS uh, or SATA hard drives the SSDs or the NVMe drives, right? Correct. Yep, so let me show you the, um, this is one of the spinning drives um, here. Uh, Randy, you've also got the, uh, the uh, uh, right. SSDs and NVMe. So what we have here is one of our supported SSD cards. Yep. As well as a new NVMe. So depending on your backplane that you choose, you can support um, up to 12 NVMe cards or you can, of course, support 24 spinning drives or SSDs. So a pretty substantial amount of storage. Right. And considering that you can have 12 NVMEs, that's uh, quite a lot of processing power. Correct. A lot of storage power there, yeah. Okay. All right, so um, now the front section here um, is, the, uh, is, a, is a front bezel. Let me remove that to show you the components behind it. Um, now, these black handles here are the uh, access points for the hot swap fans. Um, there are a total of 12 hot swap fans, and to if you do need to replace one, it is simply a case of lifting the handle here and pulling this towards, and you'll see here then is the fan. So this mechanism allows the fans to be located as close as possible to the, uh, the uh, uh, CPUs and memory, um, but the design of the handle is such that it, it uses as little space as possible uh, to gain access to those. Right. So there's six um, at the at the... Uh, on the lower half of the of the server, and then another six on the top, and they both access to the same chute there. Then they pivot and then they slide, which leaves the middle area of the server open for cool air to cool the middle and the back part of the server. Yep. Now over here is yep. a, a pull out LCD panel. Correct. Let's take a look at that. So that's accessible from the front of the system, of course. Yeah, you could uh, the bezel could have stayed on to so take a look yeah. at that, but that provides um, environmental information, air log information, and just general information about the server yeah. that you would want to know. So if you needed the IP address for the uh, X Clarity controller, the, the service processor, right. you get that information um, from that panel as well. Yeah, and um, there's also uh, USB ports here and front VGA port if you need connectivity if you have a crash card right. in your data center. Why don't you put the fan back in and yep. we'll take a look at the inside of the server. Alrighty. So, the, the, as Randy's pulling it out, um, the, the system is divided into two halves. There's an upper compute tray and a lower compute tray. And so what Randy's pulling out now is the, is the lower compute tray. And, and you'll see here the, um, the fans. Let me yeah, show them how the fans yep. work. So you can see again, as we pull this out, it wrote, the fan rotates to allow you to gain access to it in a very small space. The connection for the fan is this little uh, white, white connector right there. So yeah. Very innovative design there. And then of course, um, we have our RAID card integrated here at the front, which doesn't take away a rear PCI slot in right. the back of the server. So there's one RAID card for the lower control tray and one RAID card for the upper control tray, but in both cases, they are in the front of the server that come with the compute tray. Yeah. Okay, so should we spin that around and have yeah. a look at the at the business end? So as you can see here, you can see um, two CPUs and 24 DIMMs. Now one of the things I wanted to mention about these CPUs was the comparison and contrast of um, the system that this is replacing. The, the current 
E7 4800 and 8800 V4 CPU is right here. Now let's compare that to this these are the scalable new, processor. Right, these are the new Intel failing. Xeon. The Intel Xeon processor scalable family CPUs, right. right? As you can see, it's almost twice the size. And why is that? What? What's, well, um, what's there's just so much capability in this. It has, um, it's up to 205 watt. It has 48 PCIe lanes, six memory channels, and up to um, 28 core. So it just it packs a lot of punch in one processor. But I just thought it was interesting to see the difference in the size between these processors. So these system boards um, were created from the ground up. They were not leveraged. We did not build on the existing mm -hmm. uh, V4 systems. These were built from the ground up. Yeah. So each, <clears throat> each system board you have here, there are two system boards per tray. So each system board has two processors. And 24 DIMMs, right? Correct. Yep. So let's take a look at that. So these trays, the, the system bars actually slides out very easily here. As you can see here, here's the upper one. And the lower one is pretty much a duplicate of it. So this is where you have the, the, the processor 3 and 4 with an additional 24 DIMMs. Hmm. Now, you mentioned that, the, that we've got two um, compute trays. Now, for customers that, that want a four-socket system, but addition, the additional storage, but not, not necessarily the additional processes. What, what do you have there? Right. So let's take a look at that. So if you only wanted a, a four socket server, but you wanted to take advantage of all 24 storage bays, mm -hmm. we have this upper compute tray here. And what it provides is... This is the upper, this is storage tray. The upper storage tray. Yep. yep. I'm sorry, the upper storage tray. It provides the additional 12 storage bays, again with the uh, pivot and slide fans mm -hmm. underneath here. Yep, and, and a, another RAID card, I would add. Another RAID yep. card there. But as you can see, this one does not contain any of the processors, DIMMs yep. in it, or system boards in yeah. it. Yeah, all these connections are, are the NVMe drive, N NVMe connections that are routed from the lower compute tray, and these drive the NVMe uh, drives that you may have installed um, in the upper storage. Tray. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So quite a lot of flexibility in terms of <coughs> configuration as to whether you have four processors or eight processors and how many drive bays you have and so on. Uh, a lot of choices there um, to choose from for, for the system. So let's take a look at the upper compute tray. Okay. So in this case, this is an is a system configured with eight sockets. So as you can see, as I pull this out you're going to see the additional two processors and 24 DIMMs, and then right underneath it, just like the tray we just looked at, is an additional two processors and 24 DIMMs. Here, just pull that out, David. Yep. So there are another four processors on, on, this, on this compute tray. So yep. pretty much a duplicate of the lower compute tray. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to set this to side here. I'll give you that too. All right, so that's at the, the front of the system. So we spin around and have a look yeah, at the back. Yeah, take a look at the back. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is where all the I.O. connectivity is made. Um, the, the SR950 supports a total of 17 externally accessible I.O. slots. These are all PCIe 3.0. A uh, variety of either by 16 or by 8, mm -hmm. depending on the configuration you have. Uh, the number of slots that you can have here depends on the process configuration you have for the server. Right. But with an 8 socket system, for example, you can have all 17 uh, I.O. connections um, yeah. available to you. Two of which are ML2 and, and one right, yes. is the, our new LOM adapter. Yeah, so let's go through the different components. Right? Yeah. Yep. So on my side, um, four hot swap power supplies. Uh, variety available in either 1600 and or 1100, 1100 watt. watt, yep. Um, these are N plus N redundant, um, so you can, the system can tolerate two, fan, two power supply failures or, or utility power connect, uh, connection failures and, and still keep operating. Um, next to that, um, a um, dedicated management port uh, for remote management. And further down here, this is the, the LOM adapter that Randy, Randy has mentioned, uh, available in six different variations of mm -hmm. one gig or 10 gig um, two, dual port or quad port um, for the 10 gig either SFP plus or RJ45 connections. Right. Um, 
choices there. Um, further on, a serial port, uh, two USB 3 connections, uh, VGA port over there. And you'll see there's a variety of LEDs throughout the back of the system as well um, for um, support information. Right. Yep. Well, let's take a look at the inside. Yeah, okay. So access is through the I.O. tray, which is Randy's pulling out just now. So as you can see, all components on the SR950 are accessible either from the front of the server or the rear of the server. So this configuration throws three different riser options installed. Several PCI connections are on the system board, but then additional ones can be achieved from ins installation of these riser cards. Mm. So there, and there are three, three different riser cards uh, here and here. Uh, the choices are, this one here we have is the 5x16 uh, with ML2. It so gives you an additional ML2. Yep, right? so that's five uh, PCIe by 16 slots mm -hmm. plus a by 16 ML2 connection. Um, this riser one we have right here is the, a 2x16 riser. Right. So but you could also get one that we're not showing is a 4x8 PCI riser. Yeah, so, and the, but they're those, physically the same size. Yeah, they can, so those three variations can go in either of these riser positions. Right. And then over here, we have a 2x8 riser for two additional right. um, PCIe 3 by, by 8 connections as well. Right. So uh, I just wanted to show you a couple of the different adapters, Abe. Yeah. So here is the... ML2, mm -hmm. this just happens to be a 2 times 25 gig Mellanox adapter Yep. in the ML2 form factor. And then we have the new Intel LOM adapter. This just happens to be a quad gig, uh, a quad 10 gig, yeah. 10 base T on this one. Yeah. But as so you can the, see, they're different form factors. Yeah. And the advantage of, of both of these is that you can use a um, uh, protocol called NCSI which allows you to do out-of-band management um, via one of these ports, where port mm -hmm. one uh, gives you access to the ex-clarity control of the systems management processor directly from your production network if you desire. Right. And, and wake on LAN and, as well. And wake, these, systems, these right. adapters also support wake on LAN as well, if you right. can configure that. And then, of course, it supports numerous of your standard PCI adapters. Yeah. So just, we just wanted to show you kind of the differences in the form factors here. Yeah. So and again, again, up to 17. Up to 17 um, of them, right. PCI slots. One, one LOM, up to two ML2s, and then the rest, uh, the rest of them are in the standard PCI cards. Yeah, very good. Yep. Now, the server, uh, the IATRAE also <coughs> supports, you can see down here, this is the M.2 cards. Right. So, uh, Randy, you've got there the, the yeah. dual adapter. So here's the dual one here. When it, dual meaning that there's actually an M.2 card on both sides. This right. one, there's the M.2 card here, and this one is a 128 gig. Um, when there are two of them in this dual adapter, they're configured as a RAID 1 array pair. Right. And so this is basically, you'd use this as a boot device. You'd put your operating system right. on this. This one was one we'd recommend for the SR950. Mm -hmm. RAID 1 meaning that it can tolerate one of the, one of the M.2 right. cards failing. But you put your operating system on this system, on, the, on this device, then you can use the, the drives at the front of the server strictly for, for your, your data. data. Right. Data it doesn't have to keep your boot OS on yeah. any of those. So there's... Um, uh, 128 gig size or the smaller 32 gig if you, right. if you desire. Single or dual adapter, yeah. So Randy, I think that's about it, right? Yeah, I think so. So here we have it. This is the Think System SR950. Uh, you can see that it's a very powerful system with a lot of capability. A lot of different configuration capabilities in terms of the, the number of CPUs, the amount of memory, the amount of I.O., the amount of storage. So depending on what your needs are, we have the system for you. Yep. Well, thanks very much, Randy. Well, thank you, David. Hope you found the video useful, and we will see you later. Bye. Thank you.